हरि ओम सहना सहनौ भुन सह वीर करवाहे तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिद्विषावहे ओ शा 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 समस्तजनकल्याण निरत करुणय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विर ओंश्रीचिन्मय सद्गुरव नम योगे न चित्तस्य पदेन वाचा मल शरीर से वैद्यकन योपाकोत्तम प्रवर मुनीना पातंजली प्राजली नोस्मी हरि ओ we are in the vibhuti pad the third pad adhyaya of patanjali yoga sutra we had seen bahiranga or bahya sadhana which comprises of yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahar all these five are dealing with external world the whole object of the bahya sadhana or bahiranga sadhana is to deal with the outside world and its impressions once a yogi masters these responses and interactions with the surroundings or the world he undertakes a journey which is entirely by his mind on his mind with his mind it is just the mind that is available in antaranga sadhana dharana dhyan and samadhi these three words comprise together of antaranga sadhana now dharana dhyan and samadhi of which dharana and a bit of dhyan we have seen a little thought about it previously it is time for us to now go little deeper in dharana dhyan and samadhi it is not only the conceptual understanding that we intend to know about these things but we are truly interested in the practically aspect of knowing these three things dharana dhyana and samadhi the precise difference between them so that we are not confused in our sadhana let us first think about the mind as a stuff mind we all have used the word mind or antakarana for a very long time but let us face it square now what is mind it is definitely existing but can we point to a structure called mind 
second is it tangible or not tangible third what are the components of mind or what is it comprising of we know the functional modification of mind mana buddhi chitta ahankara are the functional modification today we are focusing on structure of the mind not the functional modification when the mind is working for deciding something amongst the various alternatives it is called buddhi sankalpa vikalpatmaka vritti hi buddhi that we have learned but that is a functional modification supposing you want to know more about a gun and if we say that a gun kills an animal a gun can kill a man a gun can be fired up into the air a gun can be fired these are functional utilities or modifications of that particular object what is the gun made up of then we have something called barrel whatever the remaining parts the gun has similarly what is the mind made up of and then we come across a situation where we realize that mind is made up of nothing else but assemblage sanghat that means the stones and the clay comes together to form what is called as mountain there is nothing called mountain in existence mountain is a shape formed as a tall thing when its components called stone and the clay comes together similarly mind is not a thing in existence but mind is a title given when the components of mind come together to form it that brings us to a very basic question what are or what is the component of mind what is the mind made up of and we realize that mind is nothing else but assemblage of vritti so if vritti is not there mind cannot be there so whenever you have one vritti mind is formed in very crude and simpler language which is not the correct representation of the word vritti we can say when a thought arises mind is born and mind well when the mind is born the world is born so that means one thought arises another thought arises one more arises so one after the other the vrittis arise and that is how the mind is formed so how would one look towards mind as mind is bundle of enormous amount of infinite amount of vrittis then comes the question ultimately what is the vritti vritti is an outward expression about something so whenever we have an outward expression towards any object this outward expression is called desire let us take an example right now there is a person existing in a distant place called los angeles but we are not thinking about him 
nor the word los angeles had come to our mind till i spoke about it so what happened because of that the thought did not go to an object called los angeles or maybe a person in los angeles that is why thought construct was not there thought formation was not there vritti formation was not there that means an urge to know or to touch or to feel so a vritti is nothing else but a thought that has arisen on the bed called mind so it is the one log of wood then another log of wood then another one and the bundle of such logs of woods forms the mind each log representing the vritti so if we have infinite urges each urge is there in the mind in the form of vritti but vritti in the form of smriti stays in a dormant condition or active condition if the vritti is in dormant condition what happens it stays somewhere deep within this thing called mind currently the desire to speak has come to me so i am speaking the karmendriyas are working simply because the desire to speak has come out that means this the vritti of speaking is the one which dominated amongst other vrittis and that is how it has started expressing itself that means amongst the various vrittis that we are harboring the mind is made up of so let us take a technical example let us say there are 1000 vrittis in mind so what is this mind of this man comprised of 1000 vrittis now what is he doing currently he is bringing out one of his vritti and is working in the field of senses so let us say there is a vritti of eating food has come there is a desire to eat food so he will arrange the food he will start using his hands to eat the food so one vritti is now in action a vritti can be dormant or alive and kicking in the form of action so what is our life taking out one vritti from the stack of many vrittis work according to that vritti and when that vritti is fulfilled or desire is fulfilled come back take another vritti so life is nothing else but series of desires that are brought into the field of fructification and the show repeats again and again for many many births now comes the question if the mind is bundle of so many infinite urges and desires or vrittis what is this business of dharana dhyana samadhi is all about unless we understand this vritti or the urges we will not be able to understand dharana properly now when we are focusing on an object let us say right now we are focusing on listening to what i am talking or i am focusing on talking with all of us while talking what about my other vrittis i have lot of hidden vrittis i have my own delinquencies i have my own desires that are deep inside i intend to own lot of money i intend to own lot of things i want my child to be very happy all those desires or all those vrittis where are they they are dormant why because one has dominated of speaking to all of us so that means every time an urge comes out 
a desire comes out a vritti comes out there are millions of them lying in dormant state if we carefully observe the mind we realize that some of the vrittis are so dormant and deep that we do not know that they are existing in us in fact not all desires come out in open even during lifetime there are desires of yester births which are still can you take it there and open it there are desires still in the mind which are lying in dormant condition for many births when will they come out they will come out only when appropriate opportunate time comes we cannot say which desire will come out when that is how the content of desires set out for fructification is what is called prarabdha that means as it is by virtue of god's own arrangement tons of desires are kept behind in sanchita but amongst the prarabdha which has been taken out we do not know which of the desire is right now coming and which of the desires are still lying dormant why are we talking so much about desires desires and these urges and the vrittis because a dharana has a direct relationship with these vrittis up to pratyahar we deal with disturbances coming from outside for example there is a delicacy that is lying on the table seen by the eyes the mind goes towards it and the desire to eat comes to the mind so what has happened the senses including the mind is being attracted or being pulled towards an object outside so in pratyahara we do not let the sense organs interact with the objects because that is the last bastion of our connection with the world now in pratyahara the connection with the world has been cut off in order to do that the yogi had already practiced satya ahimsa aparigraha brahmacharya shaucha santosha tap all this is basically meant for getting yourself or ourselves ready to cut off from the external world that itself is a huge task but presuming that this task is complete now that i am sitting inside i have a whole lot of world to deal the external world is over but the internal world the world that is in my mind which is comprised of infinite number of urges or desires or the vrittis which are waiting to spring out and take me back into this world now the job is to look after and contain or manage these vrittis and in order to do that i have to train my vrittis i have to tend to my vrittis in a very meticulous manner the very fact that i have to deal with the vrittis because the mind is made up of vrittis the very arrangement of vrittis its study itself is a prerequisite before going for dharana or dhyan or samadhi we are trying to bring all the vrittis in mind to a particular area in dharana desh bandha dharana has been defined as desh bandha now when we say desh bandha we are supposed to bind the mind to a particular area called desh that means the mind has to come to 
one particular area or object and all the mind has to concentrate on that particular object that is called as dharana the question now is the mind that i am bringing to this particular object or the area called dharana the mind it simply is comprising of so many vrittis so which vritti i will bring there supposing one of my desire is to bring my mind on that particular object for concentration that is how we sit for meditation right now i am going to sit for meditation that means i want to concentrate on one object all right so one vritti has already come to your mind that i should concentrate on a particular area or object now the question is when you want to focus yourself on an object so one vritti is saying focus on an object what about other millions of vrittis that are already there they come up and they say no 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 i want to go here i want to go there so what happened a kind of a competition ensues amongst the vrittis to go helter skelter the whole job you wanted to do was to focus on a point but other vrittis are not letting you do that now the question is which vritti will predominate who will win this battle the battle will be won by the one where mind gives more precedence because it is confident that this is the ideal vritti or ideal object where i should focus upon now what happens is when you intend to focus in dharana the mind tells me that look that when you focused outside it was quite enjoyable you remember you put your focus on to that particular food or the lady or the money or whatever it was quite enjoyable you have already experienced it now you are trying to focus on something which you have no experience of where are you trying to focus no i am trying to focus on a on a statue on an idol of a lord narayana the mind says that what is the that in lord narayana it's a, it's a statue it's an idol what is it going to give you what has it given to you earlier there is no experience of any kind of that why are you trying to get to a barren place there is an experienced place where you had some kind of some kind of pleasure so better you go there and that is how the distraction of the mind by another vritti starts now what has happened in the mind the person who is trying to do dharana is right now landed into a fight of commotion between vrittis that are distracting him towards the previous experienced objects and subjective interactions where he was presuming the pleasure to be there so the one part is you want to go straight on the object of contemplation mind is trying to take you exactly in opposite direction towards the distractions that is the first problem all right even the distraction is not a problem i wanted to focus on narayana now the mind my mind is trying to focus on money it doesn't matter at the end we wanted to focus it on some desha it could be money also what is wrong in that there is nothing wrong in that all right so if you remove narayana and take money in front of you as an object moment you start focusing on that desha again the mind plays the same game other vritti start distracting you they say that yeah mind is the money is fine but you know that other day when i was going there the person who insulted me one day i have to teach him a lesson now what happened there is another distraction that came what it means is we have habituated ourselves in focusing on while doing karma we have habituated ourselves in focusing on the objects for a very very short period in a very very shallow manner and that is how the habit is developed into the mind we do not do anything with passion or involvement into it 
and more the involvement more is the training of the mind into a particular object the maithuna that gives us pleasure is because of tremendous amount of concentration and involvement the act has nothing to do with it unfortunately we develop this habit that is why in our day to day life we are constantly flitting from a to b b to c c to d and the pattern develops into the mind so it is not only the problem that we have infinite desires the problem also is that we do not know how to deal with the things even in vyavahar the mind gets habituated to jumping from one to another in such a fashion that our mind becomes a completely wavery substance completely full of rajogunas so that is why unless the rajoguna is steadied upon a particular thing sattva guna cannot be born now comes the question that since this yogi has already done bahiranga sadhana he will not be in such a bad situation that as what we described just now the problem with the dharana is when i want to focus on an object my mind is supposed to go to the object to do the dharana when my mind is going towards an object the why the some ruttis of my mind are distracting me in exactly opposite direction so what is happening i am trying to move ahead and somebody is pulling me sideways <clears throat> perhaps the best analogy is when a tiger goes into the herd of wild cows to hunt he is trying to kill one particular target he has one target one cow in mind to attack so when he goes to attack that cow other cows attack the try to attack the tiger so what the tiger does he tries to catch the object simultaneously defend itself from the other cows who are trying to disturb him this is dharana dharana is trying to focus on one object or desh simultaneously stopping the distractions that are coming so dharana is two way battle one focusing on what i am focusing upon second defending the distractions that are happening so by one hand you are stopping the distraction and by another hand you are pushing towards the object this is a dharana now more the distractions less you will focus on the object more you focus on the object less will be the distractions mind pulling you towards other vrittis and you trying to put the mind in only one vritti <coughs> remember focusing concentration meditation is focusing one vritti we have hundreds and thousands that is not a problem we have to take one vritti when we do that if i have to stop the distraction what is the meaning of this statement that i have to stop mind getting distracted outside and it should focus on one particular object or desha what it means is all the content of my mind should be on the object that means all the vrittis of the mind have to go and focus on that particular object this all or total content of the mind is called pratyaya this is a very important word in yoga sutra called pratyaya pratyaya means empty number of vrittis that we have in our mind or the total content of the mind when it is focused on one object now can you focus the total content of mind in one one particular object the process goes like this you have only one vritti when you focus on an object right now i am focusing on an object that is the vritti so you keep focusing keep focusing keep focusing other vrittis will start bubbling 
you are not letting them either go outside but we are forcing them to come along with this one vritti the shepherd is taking all the goats and the lambs together towards an object the lambs try to go here and there but he pulls them all in one direction similarly a person who is doing dharana is focusing on one object and simultaneously pulling in all other vrittis from distractions and letting them go in one direction this is dharana now imagine a scattered group of goats and lambs the shepherd gets up that means one vritti gets up collects all these lambs and goats that means all other vrittis and tries to bring them into one direction this is dharana this is dharana the difference between dharana and dhyana is dharana is an attempt to bring all the vrittis into that one vritti and the total content of mind is being now thrown into one direction in only one track it is going once it starts going in one track dharana has entered into dhyan i think the image is frozen i think the no video no video is frozen no audio but of wild cows with one cow in mind and simultaneously stops the other cows being attacking him this is dharana but after the object cow is hold held by the teeth the tiger runs away with that particular object now he is no more interested into others because others have also stopped doing the distraction they have stopped defending because the tiger has gone away with one object this is what happens in dharana and dhyana in the dharana distractions are simultaneously fought and focusing is also simultaneously done two acts are done at one time in dhyana distractions are no more there only one act is done that is focusing on an object so now let us see what are the problems with dhyana dharana the problem is somebody is pulling me on the sideways in dhyana there is no pulling sideways that that problem is over now in dharana the new problem comes what is the new problem the tiger has taken the object cow and ran away from the herd of other wild cows so no more distractions but while holding the cow by teeth sometimes the teeth become loose and the cow drops to the ground again the tiger catches it and further starts walking towards his den so this repetitive dropping of cow is a distraction in dharana dhyana so similarly a person who in, who is doing dhyanam he has no distractions from anywhere but when he is focusing on the object the touch with the object is touch and go sometimes he is meditating and focusing on the object sometimes the focus on the object is lost he falls back again with effort he goes towards the object so it dhyana the difficulty is that object of focus goes loses the contact with the meditator the meditator and the object of meditation when they are constant in touch with each other that is the time dhyana is happening when the meditator is partly focusing on the object of meditation and partly focusing on avoiding the distraction dharana is happening now what is happening the next stage comes after this repetitive touch and go of a meditator with object of meditation a stage comes when he is able to establish a continuous contact with the object of meditation 
when this contact with object of meditation is reached at a con- as a continuous flowing affair it is said that the dhyana has been achieved dharana and dhyana concentration and meditation these are two different things concentration is an attempt to focus on an object simultaneously stopping the distractions meditation is a stage in which there are no distractions but focusing on object is the only thing that is tried however the focus on the object is intermittent and not continuous and the whole effort is to establish it as a continuous affair when this continuity is maintained dhyana is achieved so dharana gets converted into dhyanam as a flow of operation these are not different stages these are just transformation from a stage into the next stage into the final stage so i am meditating so i am conscious about my meditation when i am meditating i am conscious about my meditation my mind definitely is aware i am the witness to my meditation so my 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 mind tells me that yes i am concentrating on an object called narayana maybe in my mind or i am trying to concentrate on nasika agra or on the top of my head so now when i focus on my nasika agra suddenly i find that some other thought is coming vritti is coming i stop it i am in a dharana stage i continue for a long time after that there is only my tip of nose and me no distractions i have entered into dhyana but this is an entry into dhyana this is not dhyana what is entry into dhyana no outside distraction you have entered into dhyana but have you achieved dhyana no why because although the outside distractions are not there my mind is focusing on that object and getting in touch with that object and sometimes loses that touch with the object outside distractions are not there agreed but a continuous flow uninterrupted presence of object of meditation in the mind for many 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 minutes seconds minutes and hours is not happening it is like my finger is going and touching the object and again that contact is lost so that is why when this particular flow of my one vritti towards the object when the flow of my one vritti towards the object starts flowing in a continuous fashion like oil tail dharavat continuous uninterrupted unbroken vritti towards that met, met, object of meditation leads to dhyana so dharana now becomes dhyana now what happens when that dharana has to go into dhanam what is happening to the rest of the vrittis of mind there are thousands of desires what happens to that all of them have become one as if all of them have become one so what is happening then entire mind is now going into the object of meditation total content of the mind not partial content total content of the mind is now being poured into one vritti of that object that is why most of the bhaktas the saintly people are describing that i can't see anything other than vithala bolava vithala karava vithala pahava vithala you just see vithala vithala that means one object mere to giridhar gopal dusro na koi this is dhyan dusro na koi no distractions of the vrittis only giridhar gopal is the object when i 
with my vritti as i am meditating on an object and the object is murli dhara or the sri krishna or the vasudeva or narayana or nasagra or mastishka whatever it is at that point of time no other vritti is coming the whole content of mind is going in a continuous fashion at this point a new distraction comes <clears throat> remember the difficulties or the or the or the issues with dharana are different dhyana are different and samadhi are different what is the issue with dharana outside distraction mind getting distracted by another vritti what is the issue in dhyana interrupted interruption is an issue lack of continuity is an issue not the distraction lack of continuity when the continuity is established then what happens the third issue comes which is the issue of samadhi what is the issue in samadhi now that all your vrittis are coming and they are focusing taila dharavat on the object of meditation now what is the issue there is an issue and this issue is the most difficult and the last issue in samadhi if that issue is tackled then samadhi is certain what is that issue the issue is when i am focusing on an object in dhyana in a taila dharavat fashion in a continuous fashion when i am focusing all my consciousness or mind or vritti into that particular object the flow of consciousness keeps going outside but it does not leave the trap of my intellect my feeling my awareness that i am meditating is the single largest obstacle in the final stage of meditation i am meditating is the biggest obstacle in the last stage of meditation in dhyana i know that i am meditating on an object i am completely focused on an object but i am focused i is still there this small self awareness is the biggest obstacle in moving beyond dhyana and mind well the object is not dhyana or meditation object is samadhi so with great difficulty and guru's blessing when one is able to dissolve sukshma antakaran vritti of me or i while meditating that means when the subject slowly starts dissolving into an object then dhyana slowly enters into samadhi dharana got converted into dhyan dhyan transformed into samadhi this happened by removing obstacles in each place a person doing dharana stopped the distractions from outside and only focused on the object and started keeping continuous touch with the object of meditation dhyana started meditation started one who is meditating upon an object one who is doing dhyanam upon an object continued the dhyanam to such an extent that slowly started removing subjectivity of it or himself he started removing from the act of meditation and in that case he moves to the next thing called samadhi now the question is if the thing is called samadhi the definition of samadhi given in the third sutra of vibhuti pada is something worth pondering upon patanjali maharaj says tadevartha matra nirbhasam swarup shunyam iva samadhi तत् एव अर्थ मात्र निर्भासम स्वरूप शून्यम इव समाधि 
a very important and most precise definition of samadhi. What he means, tat eva artha matra. Artha means object of meditation. There, then, tat eva artha matra. Artha matra means only the object nirbhasam is shining or knowing. At a point of time, when the meditator only knows artha matra, only knows the object of meditation in the shining form, nirbhasam, shining form, swarupa shunyam. By, at the same time, it makes swarupa shunya. Swarupa shunya means your own identity is made zero. You lose your identity and only artha matra nirbhasam, the object starts shining, that is called samadhi. It goes without saying that you cannot be aware of the samadhi and be in samadhi. In samadhi, the mind itself is not aware of the meditation. Because if you are aware of samadhi, that means your subjective reality is still existing. With subjective reality existing, samadhi cannot happen. At the same time, when the subjective reality ends, what, what is there in that stage? The mind itself is not there because subjective reality is gone. When subjective reality is gone, what is there? Is it a vacuum? Vacant? What is it? It is that time when the object of meditation also loses its relative phenomenal aspect and the true aspect of object comes out. What is the true aspect of any object? The true aspect of any object is consciousness. So the meditator, by losing his own mind or by losing his own subjective identity, by losing that he is the dhyata meditator, he comes to know the consciousness. Now the consciousness is not of an object that he was focusing because that phenomenal aspect of object is gone. Only the consciousness and consciousness is same everywhere. Means what? Means he touches infinity. This is what is called as pushing beyond. Gurudeva had said that Tapon Maharaj pushed me beyond. Where? Beyond where? Beyond means beyond everything because there is nothing beyond that. So this pushing beyond is losing your identity as subject. Simultaneously, the object losing its objectivity as object. When subject is lost, object is lost, what remains? What about the knowing of an object? Whether the knowing remains? Yes, the knowing remains, but not knowing of an object by a subject, but only knowing means knowledge remains. That is exactly the chit aspect of Sachit Ananda. The meditator has reached a stage where for him, the world is no more existing because no distractions, because the world was created by the mind, the vrittis, the vrittis are gone. The object of meditation was under the vritti, but the object of meditation itself has lost its significance because the subject is no more existing. Now what happened? In the chitta, there is complete absence of vritti, yoga, chitta, vritti, Nirodha. 
Viruddha. No more vruttis are coming from me. If vruttis are not there, mind cannot exist because mind is bundle of vruttis. So vruttis are gone. Mind is gone. Mind is gone. The world is gone. The world is gone. The objects are gone. No world, no objects, no vruttis, no mind, no subject, no object. What is there? Is it a void? This is where exactly the Buddhist Madhyamika school came up to this point and they are saying with Advaita up to this point. Here they concluded there is nothing, only void, blank, vacant. Advaita and Yoga Shastra differs from that. It says no, it is not vacant or void, but it is something which is full of bliss. A stage where only bliss is there. Only presence is there, only knowing is there of everything. It is not knowing of something, it is not happiness of something, it is not presence of something, but pure presence, pure happiness, pure knowledge, Satchit Ananda Swarupa. The Purusha is recognized, Purusha Khyati. Simultaneously, you come to know all that existed so far was Prakriti and this is Purusha. Knowing this itself is Kaivalya. However, in Samadhi also there is an issue. What is the issue in Samadhi? It doesn't last longer. There is a Dasha called Vyuthana Dasha coming down. So in case of Dharana, there is an issue. Dhyana, there is an issue. Samadhi also, there is an issue. Whenever there is an issue in Samadhi, and what is the issue in Samadhi? You don't stay in that stage for longer. You come down. This coming down is called Vyuthana. So when this issue is existing, then it is called Sampradnyat Samadhi. But again, when Yogi pushes himself forward, <clears throat> And what makes him push forward? It is the previous achievement that pushes for the next achievement. We are going to come to that sutra later, that it is the yoga that pushes for further yoga. So, when yogi tries his level best further, then he enters into a state where he goes into samadhi from where there is no need to come back. Now he has multiple choices. Because he can stay in the stage of Samadhi for a long time, he may decide to stay in that stage for a longer time and forget everything. So the body will cast off and that's it. There's no coming back. It's gone. It's over. The whole game is over. Or he can reach the Samadhi and again come back knowing fully well that he can go back. As the Sufi says, because for them like Vivekananda, there was a very high possibility for Swami Vivekananda that after getting into Nirvikalpa Samadhi, he wouldn't have come back. And that would have been a great loss to us because to whom we would have looked forward to learn. To learn. It was Swamiji who told us or taught us so Ramakrishna Paramahusa used his own powers to push him down from Samadhi. And that is how Swami Vivekananda gave so much of contribution to the whole spirituality. So those who know how to get into Samadhi and come back because they have mastered the art. So one is Either they will permanently remain in Samadhi and forget the body, the body will be cast off and they will be merged one with the Brahman. Another is they wish to come back for the Loka Sangra because the Prarabdha is still existing. And the, those who are still not mastered, they will keep practicing the Samadhi till they reach the top. So with this, it must be now clear as to what is Dharana Dhyana and Samadhi. This clarity is required because a yogi cannot undertake Dharana Dhyana Samadhi unless 
he understand what he is doing in meditation we all do what is called haphazard meditation meditation is an act that is done after achieving a certain state of mind whether you achieve that state of mind through bhakti karma or dhyana that is a different thing but it definitely augurs well that you must be well prepared before undertaking dharana dhyana and samadhi these are very high stages of act of concentration a person with tremendous amount of rajoguna in the vyavaharika vishwa how can he expect to do dharana dhyana samadhi because dharana dhyana samadhi is nothing else but sattva guna in ascendancy when you are plagued with rajoguna or tamoguna and still you think of doing dharana or dhyana it doesn't fit well a dirty person with soiled clothes is trying to enter the temple he will not be allowed he has to first wash his himself take snanam and purify himself shuchir bhutata so that is why the first thing has to be done first otherwise a person in first standard cannot be put into a phd class he will not understand anything he will not achieve anything he may physically sit there that is how 99% of meditators are sitting in meditation some of them claim that they were in meditation for 1 hour 2 hour sir a second of meditation is impossible for a person plagued with rajoguna and tamoguna so preparation of ascendancy of sattva guna is nothing else but the bahiranga sadhana of yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahar has to be done that is why ashtanga yoga because we are nikrushta sadhaka for the one who has done this in the past birth and suppose he gets reborn he will start from dharana dhyana samadhi he will be into the kriya yoga aspect right away he is a madhyam adhikari uch adhikari will directly go for example many of the disciples of uh, viveka is ramakrishna paramahansa and for that matter even gurudeva he went he saw he something he, he wanted to meet shivananda all that it looks like a, a a small affair but it is not he was already a prepared soul that is why he moved upward so fast because most of the standards were already passed by him it was just a reminder a casual revision he did and directly sat for the phd class with swami tapavana maharaj and that is how in case of dharana dhyana samadhi stages are to be understood abstraction have to be understood issues of dharana are different issues of dhyana are different issues of samadhi are different and this should be very clear in mind before understanding the meditation aspect of patanjali yoga sutra hari om om purnamad पूर्णम पूर्णात पूर्णम उदच्छते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओ शांति 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 हे हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम थैंक यू संजय जी विल वेट फॉर सम क्वेश्चंस मीनवाइल आई जस्ट आस्क अ फ्यू क्वेश्चंस एंड लिस्ट अ फ्यू पार्ट्स इन बिटवीन सो यू वर स्पीकिंग अबाउट द समाधि एंड आई मिस्ड राइटिंग द नोट्स uh the the exact definition of samadhi so mind is not aware of meditation could you just uh, repeat a few yeah. things which you covered up tad eva artha matra nirbhasam swarupa shunyam eva samadhi that stage in which only the object of meditation is illuminated nirbhasam illuminated at the same time swarupa shunya the subjective identity is almost even almost lost is called samadhi the subject 
is almost lost object is the only thing remaining but object is also remaining in its illuminated form that means chaitanya form not as the object with external characteristics and a murti and a narayana everything is lost only as a consciousness it dwells in the mind of the meditator losing the meditator's own identity is called samadhi the dhyata meditator dhyana meditation dheya object of meditation as if all of them have come together that is samadhi hari ho and uh, you also mentioned that he is it is not presence of something knowing that all this is prakriti and uh, purusha another obstacle at that stage what is that the obstacle or the issue in samadhi is not to stay in that stage for a longer time and come down vyuthana falling back so a stage when subjective identity is lost object as and consciousness is only known that state lasts for a very short time and there is a fall back this falling back is an issue in samadhi in that stage when the subjective identity is lost a simultaneous recognition comes that the whole prakruti the entire universe creation is a one thing and the real consciousness or the purusha is another thing this dawns upon the mind it is not a knowledge it dawns upon the mind that consciousness and all the created things are different that itself is called kaivalya or which is called moksha in advaita kaivalya in sankhya or the yoga philosophy hari hari thank you hari om sanjeev ji hari uh, uh, you have mentioned uh, clearly mentioned about uh, what is uh, mind the mind is a substance not existing but uh, uh, con- containing lot of thoughts when a thought arises mind is born when the mind is born the world is born and life is nothing but is a series of desires this is what the mind is all about now you have mentioned about dharana dhyana samadhi and pratyaya also pratyaya is the total concentration of the mind now when you are looking at a person you can is it possible to measure how big the desires in his mind or how concentrate how con- how he is concentrating is there any way to identify I mean, yes. Maybe it's uh, out of uh, this context. Yes. I guess. Yes. 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 No, it is not out of context. It is right in the context. The person who is practicing dhana, dharana, samadhi, he automatically starts getting certain powers. Now we are going to see in rest of the Vibhuti Pada all these siddhis or the powers. One of the power is to read somebody's mind. Swami Vivekananda was expert in that, and he taught it to Sharda Nanda also. how to read somebody's mind so most of the sadgurus when they look at you they know how much good you what how, how is your state of your mind are you a good meditator or not ramakrishna paramahansa saw vivekananda and said his 9 10th brain is already immersed in sadhana in 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 samadhi only with 1 10th brain is working in this world so it is possible to read somebody's mind for those siddhas those with occult powers which come again to them out of their own practice of samadhi and dhyana in fact for that matter if you start concentrating upon even a normal nominal vyavaharik objects you start getting result a scientist concentrates and he gets nobel prize because he discovers something this is also because his mind gets focused the knowledge when you lose something problem is in concentration and meditation in meditation especially you lose yourself that is why you ask a musician when did you uh, sang very well he would say i was almost lost i did not know i was singing and i sang beautifully when he was not aware then who sang because only when identity of subjective identity is lost great things are done because that time the buddhi is not working that time what is called pragna is working that pragna gives wondrous results that is why mozart bitovan at the height of a painter painter like uh, van gogh 
when he was painting he got lost into the painting so much that he became one with the yellow color that is why it is so vibrant today also it appeals because these are things that are seen and brought by them when they themselves were not aware of them a good singer always loses himself in music and then the best of his comes out hari ho Yeah, it happens when we work uh, at certain uh, important things in the office also and yes. especially in gurudev's uh, speeches he is uh, he won't recognize himself like you know that is he has mentioned it some so many times and but this pratyaya pratyaya is total content of my focus totally focus this yes. is coming between uh, dhyana between dhyana and samadhi or uh, where the pratyaya falls all all along the time from dharana to samadhi the total content of mind or pratyaya is applied on the object of meditation only at the stage of samadhi the pratyaya is not applied because pratyaya is not existing anymore so pratyaya or the total content of the mind has to be focused if total content is not focused that means there is a distraction half content is focused half is distracting you then that is dharana is getting disturbed by the external distraction pratyaya the total content has to be employed on the object of meditation that itself is a meditation and then we move forward as we move forward the pratyaya itself loses its significance the mind becomes loose it becomes thin slowly the vrittis are dissolving and a stage comes when the mind itself dissolves at that point of time there is a no even the person who is meditating is not aware that he is meditating so he is like a log of wood kashtavat he is like a log of wood swami vivekananda when he was pushed by his by american disciples when he was meditating he was almost falling because the whole thing is kashtavat he is neither aware of the surroundings himself mind nothing at that point of time you if you lift the body and put it in a boiling water or a boiling oil nothing will happen because there is nobody to even suffer from the pain hariyo hariyo very well explained thank you ji हरि ओम डॉक्टर संजय जी जी टू क्वेरीज अबाउट दी मल विक्षय पावर एंड रस स्वाद आर दी दोषा ऑफ ध्यान इज दैट राइट अनादर इज अबाउट लाइक व्हेन वी से एज लाइक फोर्थ स्टेट ऑफ लाइक तुरिया सो इज इट तुरिया एंड समाधि इज सेम तुरिया इज कंपेरेबल टू सविकल्प समाधि बिकॉज turiyavastha when it matures a matured turiyavastha is the one where the person in turiyavastha is not aware that he is in turiyavastha that is nirvikalpa samadhi so turiya has two aspect turiya is fourth chamber so when you go from third to fourth chamber from teen avastha to the fourth avastha you are aware that you are entering into fourth avastha and then the awareness that you are into the turiyavastha is also lost so it is nothing but turiya represents both the types of samadhis the nirvik savikalpa and the nirvikalpa but usually the fourth avastha is compared with the nirvikalpa samadhi so turiya being the fourth in terms of avastha it is the last avastha because there are only four there is no fifth and the fifth one is when when the avasthas itself do not matter there is no first second third fourth it is the ultimate thing because fourth is present when other three are considered otherwise there is no fourth how number 4 will come if number 1 2 3 is not there so that means when you are aware of three and you are not in three but i am in fourth that is savikalpa but when you are not aware that you are in fourth that means 1 2 3 is also not existing and the four is also not existing that is nirvikalpa and as far as this uh, mala kashay vikshep and rasaswad all these are obstacles to samadhi that is true rasaswad is what when happens when you go into cervicalpa samadhi anandam galors you feel so happy so blissful that you get trapped into it but thing is when you feel happy that means you are comparing the happiness with something to feel happy is to test the happiness in comparison with something when you go beyond there is nothing to compare happiness is not felt but happiness is present by happiness itself that is the next stage so rasaswad is the last obstacle in samadhi correct hari
हरि ओम संजय जी जस्ट जस्ट वांटेड यू नो व्हेन वी टॉक ऑफ शून्यता एंड वी से दैट बुद्धिस फाउंड इट इज दिस थिंग एंड यू नो योगीस फाउंड दैट देयर वाज कॉन्शियसनेस what would be a, dif- a difference in the sense that i'm sure anybody who has reached that stage would also know whether there is nothing i mean they, you know is it a word kind of split in uh, understanding you know just a uh, uh, semantic kind of split what is shunyata and what is this so how, because anyone who at that stage would would have the ability to recognize what is there right that you are in playing in the the highest realms of i mean there's nothing more than that really so just a little clarification it's a, it's a small analogy i will explain this and uh, after that i will have to stop because i have a meeting i'm in mumbai oh, okay. uh, see the this it can be a small analogy will explain it when you go to a top of a mountain what do you feel one person feels that what a serene atmosphere everything is silent still and so beautiful another person says that oh it is all greenery all around and look at the sky from here what is happening sir both are at the top of the mountain one is describing one experience and call, calling it to be the great another is telling about another experience and calling it to be the great so what is happening is it is nothing else but just the difference in describing the situation when you reach there तत् शांतेन चिरेन अभिगच्छति शांतिम चिरेन अधिगच्छति गीता माता सेज एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम यू रीच पीस ऑफ अ वेरी हाई ऑर्डर समबडी सेज एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टीस टाइम यू रीच द हैप्पीनेस ऑफ द हाईएस्ट ऑर्डर द ब्लिस ऑफ हाईएस्ट ऑर्डर दीस आर समहाउ सम वर्ड्स दैट आर यूज्ड टू डिस्क्राइब बिकॉज़ दैट इज इनडिस्क्राइबेबल सिचुएशन बिकॉज़ वर्ड्स कैन नॉट कैच इट दैट इज व्हाई द अंतिम गंतव्य anubhava anubhuti can only be described in many ways that's why realized souls have described the same experience in many many different ways so that is why somebody says that i bet upon it there is nothing else but amrut anubhava there so another person says that there is no anubhava or anything there is just peace shanti so these are nothing else but inability to verbalize the experiences at that stage because the experience cannot be verbalized so there are certain kind of tatvik bhed these are tatvik bhedas anubhuti wise it makes no difference whatsoever everybody has eaten shrikhandam some says it is madhur other says it is sweet third one says that it has its own beauty these are expressions anubhuti is everybody has eaten it and he has already experienced that is for him to experience when it comes to expression the words fall short because words cannot catch that experience hari om